Hello and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. If you've already subscribed, thank you for subscribing. Well, as some of you know, I just moved and I found myself in need of some window coverings in a hurry. It's easy enough to go out and buy some curtains, but I just couldn't bring myself to buy crummy curtain rod hardware. And I decided I would go the DIY route and make some of my own, hopefully stronger than the kind I was finding in the stores. I decided to use some half inch EMT conduit and bend it into an appropriate shape. Surprisingly, it's not that hard and it turned out awesome. They look great. So if you want to see how I made these curtain rods, stay tuned till the end. And for now, let's get going. So I hate crummy, cheap, poorly built, overpriced curtain rod hardware. I just can't stomach it. You look at the parts and you realize they're just modifying industrial parts that have been in existence in the electrical and plumbing worlds for ages. And those parts are so much stronger than what they sell in design stores and big box stores for your curtains. I hate building things with cheap materials and I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it even though I was in a hurry to make these curtains. So in order to make the curtain rods, I decided to use half inch EMT conduit. EMT conduit is pretty interesting. It's made of galvanized steel and it's designed to protect cable in your wall or somewhere where the cable might need protection. I'm not gonna be able to bend this with the same level of proficiency that an experienced electrician would be able to, but that doesn't matter when making curtain rods. You can be off a little bit. There's no code for curtain rods. And in the end, what you get is something that's fairly professional, looks pretty good, and is really, really strong. It's This is much stronger than any curtain rod that I have ever purchased at a big box store or design store. Oh, and before I start, just so you know, this is a pretty old house. It's had lots of owners. You're gonna see holes like this, cracks, all kinds of stuff. Normally, I would look to fill those holes, then paint, and then put up curtains but I kind of need curtains in a hurry, so I'm gonna forego all that and just put the curtains up around the holes. Deal with it later. Conduit comes in 10 foot lengths and it's really cheap. A 10 foot length is a little bit unwieldy. <laughs> and if you don't have the space, it might be worth it to just cut off as much as you know you're gonna need for your curtain rod. Make sure to include length for the stubs on the ends, the curved parts, but then cut it down to a manageable size and work from there. To cut EMT conduit, you can do it in a bunch of ways, hacksaw, whatever you want, but that's kind of messy. I prefer to use a tube cutter like this one. This tube cutter is much much larger than is required to cut half inch EMT conduit. You could use a much smaller one, but generally speaking, when you're using a tool like this, if it's bigger than what you require, it's gonna do a beefier job. It's gonna be a lot easier to use. In this case, it cut through the EMT conduit like butter. It was really easy. I just clamped it on, spun it around a couple times, boom, cut, done. So then once you've got a manageable piece that you can work with, you've gotta put two bends in either end and you wanna make sure that those bends have a distance between them appropriate for your window. So the first one's the easiest one to do because basically you know you're just gonna bend the end up. The way you bend EMT conduit is to use a conduit bender like this one. This is a Klein Tools conduit bender. It's really good. Conduit benders are made specifically to the diameter of conduit you are bending. In this case, I'm bending half inch conduit. I need a half inch conduit bender. And to bend the end, which is what they call a stub, I really just insert the conduit into the bender right to the very end, make it flush and start my bend. Normally when you're bending EMT conduit, you would put a mark on the conduit and then line that mark up with this arrow with this bender that would create a stub that is five inches from the beginning of the bend to the mark. Lining it up flush like this is a little unconventional. I'm just finding I'm getting the perfect stub for my curtain rod needs just by lining it up flush and then I don't have to cut it. So I'm going this way. And half inch conduit does not require a lot of strength to bend. You just gotta have the right technique. So in this case, I insert the conduit into the bender, make the edge flush, put my foot on there. I'm using, you can see I'm using my steel toes here. Probably not necessary. Steel toes definitely help if you've got them. They're great because they have a plate in the sole that makes it super easy to push down on the bender. But really any thick soled shoe, any strong shoe would do. And then I just push straight straight down on the bender, just like this, and guiding the handle of the bender with my hand, I get what I think is reasonably close to a 90 degree bend. The conduit bends really easy and it bends really well. There's no rippling on the inside. There's no crimping, it just bent. And then as you know, cause I reviewed it probably, I don't know, almost a year ago now, the Klein 935DAG digital angle meter, which is basically made for <laughs> measuring angle on conduit. It has a, a magnetic base and a little indentation in the bottom so that it can hug onto the conduit well. And so I can use that to make sure I got a 90 degree angle. And if I don't, flip the bender over, the handle of the bender is beveled and hollow, so I can just stick it over the end of the stub I made and push or pull it one way or another. If I didn't quite get it right, there's a little fudging room there. And then I've got a nice bend with a radius of five inches. That is perfectly 90 degrees. 
on to the other side. In my case, I measured out 48 inches, and that mark is going to be the outside of the next bend, which is to say, when I am done with this, there will be 48 inches between the outside of my U on one end and the outside of my U on the other end. You wanna make sure that's appropriate for your window. It doesn't measure to the center of the conduit. It measures to the outside of the conduit wall. So I took my measurement, I put my mark down, and then in order to make what they call a back bend or a U-shaped bend in conduit, you use the star marking. I think this is true for almost every bender of every brand. The star indicates where you should put your mark if you're doing this U-shape or back bend kind of shape with some conduit. So it's just as easy on this side as it is on the other, except I have to line up the star with the mark. I line up the star with the mark. I put my foot on the bender. I push straight down and I use the handle to sort of guide me in making the second bend of the U. You want the two 90 degree bends to be perfectly parallel to one another. You don't want one dog legging off in some weird direction. That's going to be not a very good curtain rod. <laughs> you want it to be as close to perfect U shape as you can get. If you get it a little wrong, and you might, then again, you can just take the handle of the bender, insert the EMT conduit into that handle, and then just sort of bend it around. There's a little bit of play there. Anyway, once we're all done, it's a pretty simple process. The next step requires some way to attach your newly made U-shaped curtain rod to the wall. So the way I chose to do that was to grab some half inch conduit connectors from the electrical part of the big box store, and then walk over to the plumbing part of the big box store and found some half inch plumbing flanges, which happen to have threads that roughly match the EMT conduit threads. It's not perfect. They're not meant to go together, but if you force it, they do. And then after you're done forcing it, they're together. Like, I mean, solid. <laughs> Super cheap to buy all these parts. Even though they're not supposed to go together, they do. I grab the conduit connector, I screw it into the flange. Then I put one flange up on the wall right where I want it. So in my case, that ends up being approximately three inches above the window frame. So then I screw the second flange in and I tighten the locking screws, which I made sure to turn to the inside so you can't see them. And that was the curtain rod done. Don't forget to put your rings on before you fully tighten everything. That's a bit of a drag. And then you hang your curtains. And that's really all there is to it, to make your own very sturdy, very strong, I think pretty cool looking curtain rods to hang custom curtains. You can make these obviously to any length. And then once you know how to bend EMT conduit and how to put it together with the various connectors that exist, like I say, it's basically an erector set or a Meccano set of things that you can build other stuff from. In the coming months, I'll try to do some more EMT conduit DIY things. I just think it's really cool. So I hope that helped you out. Let me know if it did in the comments section below. And if it did help you out, please feel free to like or subscribe. Both those things really help a channel out. Hit that thumbs up button. And otherwise, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, and I'll see you next Saturday.